Hello, everyone. Um, since we're in the year of St. Joseph, I thought I would spend a little time here with St. Joseph or, um, and, and our Lord as a boy. Um, but also I wanted to share with you, of course, as we get close to Holy Week um, in this time of pandemic um, and coronavirus, it's like we change and we plan and then we change and then we plan and more details and more details. And so I have to keep trying to keep you up to date on some things. Um, I know that it's beginning to feel like everything is being lifted and like with a lot of people have vaccines and you feel like it's over. It's not. We have to remember that. Please remember that. So now and all through probably the next few months anyway, but masks are still required. And I would like to remind you that wearing a mask down here over your chin is not, doesn't do any good to anybody. You know, it needs to cover your nose and your mouth. So please, um, some of the ushers are having a little bit of problem with that, you know, because they're supposed to be watching for it. So please, um, let's just continue. As long as we continue to follow all these safeguards, then we can do open up in little ways that make us feel better. Um, the other thing I want to remind you is um, that physical distancing. Um, it, sometimes we're doing it well, but sometimes, especially when we go up to communion, some of the communion lines begin to pack up. You know, try to remember to keep that distance. There's no hurry. Um, and so um, please try to remember to keep that distance as you come up for communion. And of course, since we've opened up some of the church in terms of seating to get more people in, um, I'd also like to remind you that we're asking, please don't sit, if you're in one of those pews where you can sit in, where we've taken the tape off, um, please don't sit directly in front of or directly behind somebody. Try to move, there's a lot of room in those pews. So please try to move off to the side of people so that we're not directly in front of or directly behind. Um, that's for everybody's comfort, you know? People are commenting now that um, we're not doing as good um, especially some of the people that are just now coming back to the church who've heard we're doing so well and they come back in and then they're saying it doesn't feel comfortable. So please, um, let's make everyone feel comfortable by the way we watch our physical distancing and our mask wear. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, because of we've seen more people coming back, um, we are now doing next Sunday, um, next weekend, for our Passion Sunday, or some people call it Palm Sunday um, celebration, um, we have added a 515 Mass on Saturday night and an 1115 Mass on Sunday morning. Now we could call those overflow, but also some people prefer to sit in the hall because there's more distancing. So some of the people that are not coming back to, not in church on a regular basis, but would like to come for Palm Sunday, we wanna make them feel comfortable. And so we're opening that up, both for if we have extra people, but also so that if they choose to be in the hall, there's more distance in the hall. So um, please understand we really are working our best to get as, allow as many people to celebrate with us, especially during the true of the holy days. Um, so I really, really appreciate your help in all of that. For Palm Sunday, um, things will be a little different, of course. Um, we'll bless the palms at the beginning of Mass in front of the altar. Then the palms will be carried out, and they'll be at the doors as you leave. They won't be handed out, but be in baskets, and you can reach down and take them yourself. Okay? So that'll happen both here in the church and in the hall. On Holy Thursday, um, we have, the bishop has given us permission to have two Masses on Holy Thursday instead of just the evening Mass. I would remind you, there is no morning Mass. There never is a morning Mass on Holy Thursday. Holy Thursday is only an evening Mass. We'll have Mass at 5.30, and we'll have Mass again at 7.30 um, here in the church, okay? And, um, the 7.30 Mass will be live streamed, okay? Um, for the altar of repose, if you remember Holy Thursday, um, we follow the Eucharist out and we um, wait kind of in the Garden of Gethsemane or the altar of repose until midnight. 
um, so you're free. Um, we will be do the, doing this procession and have the altar proposed after the 7.30 mass. If you come to the 5.30, you can go home and have dinner, come back later and, uh, and spend time with the Blessed Sacrament. Um, it's a really, really beautiful time. If the weather permits, if it's nice, we'll have it outside in the plaza. If not, it will be in the hall with the doors open so that people feel comfortable. Um, we will um, repose the Blessed Sacrament until midnight, and then it, so we need people to be there until midnight, some people. For Easter Sunday, um, Easter is the biggest feast. It's the most wonderful feast that we have, and um, we're trying to find ways to lift it up. We will have choir um, for the Easter vigil, um, and for some, we'll have music at all of the Sunday Masses. Um, we will have hymnals in the pews. Um, that's the first time we're putting the hymnals back. Remember, we do sanitize this building on a regular basis, um, and that will help the, the hymnals as well, so um, we should be okay with that. Um, we will have altar servers. We're starting to add um, our older altar servers will be starting to be on Sundays. Um, there'll be one once during Easter season. Of course, I'll need more than that for Holy Thursday, for the Easter vigil especially. Um, so um, altar servers, um, high school, junior, uh, eighth grade, college. Um, if you can help us out, please call Kathy because we really could use help. Um, this year, we are going to have our big baptismal font full for Easter, okay? Um, and so we will have flowing water for Easter, um, which is just, it, that was a tough decision, but we decided to do it. Because that font has, has to have um, sanitation stuff in it always, we always have to have some chlorine in it and stuff to keep it fresh and, and clear. So um, we feel it's okay. Um, to do that. We will not have holy water at the doors in the small um, fonts because those are small, a little bit of water and everybody's putting their hands in, so that we can't do. Um, we will do the holy water font, the big one, the baptismal font. You are free to go ahead and bless yourselves if you want. You, there's no requirement to do that, however. Um, and so just wanted to be sure you know that. We have decided we're going to start using our regular confessionals um, middle of next month, after, after, actually after Divine Mercy Sunday. Um, Divine Mercy um, always had that, that devotion. Um, a lot of people are encouraged to go to confession, so there's a lot of confessions that Saturday um, before Divine Mercy Sunday. So it'll be after that, sometime after that, and we'll announce it but confessionals, uh, we'll start using our regular confessionals again. They will be sanitized, or they are sanitized. Um, so um, it will be safe. Our confessionals are large, are big, and so we feel it's safe to go ahead and do that. Um, these are some of the things that we're planning to try to make our Easter celebration, you know, really more joyful, and really a time to praise our God. And, to help everybody feel, okay, yeah, there's an end in sight to all of this. We're not there yet, so please remember that. We're not there yet. If you see people without masks, if you see people not doing it right, you might mention to them, you know, just say, Father, it's very, very strict. Um, so please, we have to wear masks in the church. That's the bishop's rule. Social distancing um, and masks are still both the bishop's rule and masks are the county rule. Um, and the city rule. And so um, we are following um, the rules, the laws, um, and so we ask you to do the same thing. I know for you, I can't wait for the holy days. Um, I'm really starting to look forward to them. I've been talking to um, our candidates that are joining the Catholic Church, um, and they are so excited for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, so. Watch the bulletin. Um, we'll continue to let you know. Um, Thursday night, um, remember I said 7.30 is the main celebration. Um, the main celebration on Good Friday is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the Easter Vigil, um, which is a longer, it's not a regular Vigil Mass, it's longer. 
Um, but um, this year will be simplified a bit. And we can't do baptisms in our main font. You know, we'll be doing them up front. But um, it will also be, you know, it's a longer mass. So be aware of that. Uh, sometimes those issues that are longer, yeah, they're a little hard on children. So consider that, whether your children are ready for that and can handle that. I thank you very much. This has been a difficult time, and it's, it's an exciting time right now as we begin to look for ways to begin to open up and make everybody feel better. One of the things I've been laughing about is, you know, Bishop said when we closed everything down, after we, uh, when we finally opened back up, he said, okay, no, we don't give the sign of peace. And you notice priests never say, offer the sign of peace. But I've noticed that slowly, more and more, you're beginning to do it anyway. You're so into giving peace and greeting each other that you're starting to do it anyway, at least to the people immediately around you. I'm not going to tell you you can't do it. We're still not going to say it yet. But um, it's so much fun to see you um, doing it because we're all longing for the body of Christ to come together again here at St. Bernard of Clairvaux. I'm excited for that too. Um, so I look forward to celebrating the Easter mysteries with you. Um, and I thank you for all that you're doing to make this a wonderful parish and at the same time, a safe and healthy parish. Take care and God bless.